Gorgeous day in Austin, Texas turns into a breezy but cool night here on Fab Tuesday. And we have baseball on LHN as the Sam Houston State Bearcats visit the Texas Longhorns. Good evening, everybody. Keith Brown along, Greg Swindell. Zeke, when you look at what took place over the weekend, it all started on the mound 60 feet, six inches away for Texas. Yeah, Texas has had a great, a great year pitching on the mound as they started the weekend at Rice and then came against Boise State. But last weekend, yes, Bryce Elder with a season high 11 strikeouts. Whatever you can do, I can do better. Ty Madden on Saturday with his first complete game as a Longhorn and then Dramatics on a Sunday when Boise State tied it up in the ninth. But the walk off by Cam Williams right there in the 10th would give Texas a perfect weekend and sweep Boise State. Well, you look at it now, 8-0. and oh. When I look at that, the first thing you say is, well, you're 8-0. and oh. You want to get 9-0. and oh. Everybody knows what's coming up for this Texas team. First time they've been in this situation since 2009. You've got LSU, Arkansas, Missouri ahead of you. Is this a trap game? I don't think so, but this is a pretty good baseball team when you look at Sam Houston State. Uh, Sam Houston State is a really good baseball team. Three out of four years, they've won the Southland Conference, and they come in this game five and one. So can it be? It could be if you let it, but Texas has been playing really good baseball, pitching well, playing good defense. you got to continue that tonight and don't look ahead to the weekend. Now look at Cowser, too. The first player, you told me this, and I didn't know this, the first player for Sam Houston State ever to be listed on the Golden Spikes list, he's a good player. Yeah, but fast in the outfield, played third base a lot last year and getting his chance back in the outfield. Third team preseason All-American can pretty much do it all. He's perfect on the bases this year and a number five prospect in the MLB draft for next year. He's just a sophomore at Sam Houston. You can see the new head coach, Jay Sirianni, his first season as a head coach. He really, he's got to bring a bunch of folks in. They have. They have 22 new faces on this club, and you look at it, and uh, you look at his lineup. They've got good hitting from top to bottom. They come in swinging the bat really well. Christian Smith, though, has been outstanding at this point. He's hitting fifth in the lineup, 529 on the season. He's got nine base hits and 17 plate appearances. He's driven in seven, and they're going to be facing what you and I both think is a really good-looking young left-hander in Pete Hansen. Pete Hansen. Freshman out of El Dorado Hills, California. Big lefty, six foot two, 200 pounds. Got good stuff. Fastball, slider, changeup. We've seen a lot out of Pete this year, and I like the second one there. Poise. He's got very good poise for a freshman and pitchability, meaning he's not afraid to use that three pitch mix at any point and, and understands how to use it. Well, the left-hander will get an opportunity to face a really good offensive line. Anthony McKenzie will lead it off. He's moved over from second to short the last couple of ball games. He is a true freshman. Swinging the bat pretty well, 250 on the year. First pitch misses outside. Now it is a little bit different. We'll talk about things like this. You know, Pete's been coming out of the bullpen in his two opportunities now. He gets the ball to start a game. A little bit different adrenaline rush. Hit well out to right. Odo on his run. Forsen able to get to it. Good jump on that ball. Able to run it down. A good swing by McKenzie. Hodo. Doug Hodo, we saw in left field over the weekend. Now switches over to right field, giving Austin Todd a break from being in the field this week on the Tuesday. Now, this is one of those opportunities. That, like I said, I'm going to go back to the question before the the ball was hit pretty well. It is different. We were watching Pete warm up. Took a little quicker to get loose than you normally do just because adrenaline in his first career start. Oh, yeah. the, the, the adrenaline is there. I mean, the juices are flowing. This is what you want. This is what you come here at wanting to be. You want to be a starting pitcher, but yet, you know, you're young. They throw you in a couple relief rolls, and now on a Tuesday, you get that start. It's a whole different atmosphere. He was ready pretty early down there in the bullpen. 1-0 in for a strike. Told you about how good a player Kowser is. You see his numbers on the season, 360. Homer, he's driven in four. Excellent offensive player. To center, wind is going to push everything back in toward the infield, and Ellis can't make the play. Have not seen that. 
in Duke Ellis's career here. That tells you a whole lot about what this wind is going to do tonight. You see Duke just kind of drifting with it. Like you said, Zonk, the wind you would think would have pushed it back towards him a little bit, but he tends to pick it up right there at the end and just gets him in the palm. Pops out of the glove, an E8 by Duke. Very rare. Very rare. Excellent fielder. The elements make you pay attention. Corbin Vines will step in. Everyday third baseman. See, a lot of times, as an outfielder, you're told, you know, get to the ball and, and be under it. But when the wind is like it is, it's kind of hard to really get to the ball because it's always moving. Yeah, you're going to have to, you have to keep drifting with it. Just took it as high off of it at the last minute. Runner in scoring position here. To the two bag era. Hit well to center. Ellis coming on quickly. He can't get there. It's going to fall in front of him, but knocked down. Nice job of keeping that ball in front by Ellis that time. And runners at first and third, and only one out in the inning. Fast ball by Hansen. Up, out over the plate. Thought for a second Duke might have an opportunity to catch it in the air, but fortunately stops it with his glove. Double play in order. It is starting pitcher and the DH. He's listed both ways in the lineup. So if he comes out of the game as a pitcher, he can remain in as a DH. Or if he's pinch hit for as a hitter, he can still remain to pitch. We learned that before the ball game from Coach Harrington, Ty Harrington in the house tonight. So runners at first and third here early. Jack Rogers steps in from the left side. Heater in there for a strike. 400 on the season for Rogers with runners in scoring position. 417 overall as he steps in. He's driven in 10. And steps off. Checks the runners. Sam, a really good offensive team. Good numbers coming in through the first six ball games. Upstairs, count evens at one and one. You can see the 10 ribbies, also 10 hits on this season. One of them left the ballpark. Came in as a two-way player. It's going to be used that way this year as a junior. Good bender right there. And when other teams, opposing teams, know you're a strike thrower, they're going to jump on you early. Sam Houston has been swinging early, and that's the first off-speed pitch we've seen from Pete. He has a good one. A wipeout slider. Set up for it here. Good lead at first base by Vines. Not running. Breaking ball. Slider just misses outside. And the count evens at two and two. It's like Vines that time was taking a lead at first, trying to get him to throw over. Yeah, he's, he's two feet on the, on the green turf. Another big lead. Not running. Downstairs and the count goes full. Do you send him here? It's a chance for strike him out, throw him out. There is a, a real good chance with, with the slider that Hansen has. Run yourself out of an inning or you stay at first. I think he might stay at first. <laughs> Snap throw. Really close. That was an outstanding move on the snap throw. Casey Moser over there at first looking at the bag. Let's see if he tags him on the back before his hand gets there. No, just got the glove just underneath got, the armpit. And they, it looks like they're going to use the replay here as they come together and talk about this. Being a left-hander, one of the best in, 
the history of college baseball. Did you use that throw or the pickoff throw, or did you ever have that in your arsenal? I was always afraid my shoulder would go with it. I mean, because my dad always taught me step and throw, so I wasn't, I've never really tried in that, that because I was always afraid it could injure my arm, but obviously Pete Hansen has it. He's done it before and almost, I mean, pretty close. I mean, after this review, it could be. You get an opportunity to see out. the replay right here. So he's going back, hand on the bag, then the tag is the way I look at it. I, I believe he's underneath it. Yeah, he just, Zach got the tag in the armpit. Chance to look at it in slow motion again. Right hand bag right there. So I don't think there's enough there to overturn that call. No. Here they come. That's exactly the way it comes out. He is safe at first. So we'll do it again, 3-2. Well, if anything, it could keep the runner at first if he was going. Yes. And the double play can be in order. A little shorter lead this yes, time. Yes, it is. A long look in from Hanson. Now he comes set, checks the runners. The payoff. Upstairs, ball four. And they're loaded. Christian Smith, who has been Sam Houston State's best offensive player to start the season. Trouble here early for Texas. Not the start you want. Only 13 pitches in. You can still get out of this inning with a limited amount of pitches. Christian Smith, junior from El Paso. See, his numbers have been outstanding. 529 as he steps in here. Four doubles, which leads the club, a triple. And a 1 0 count now. Upper part of the zone and gets the call. And the count evens at 1 and 1. This all started, ball was lined to right by McKenzie. And Kowser looked to be a pop-up to center that you would be two outs and nobody on. Misplayed, and then a base hit and a walk had bloated the bases. Ripped foul. Ooh. Look out over there. Off of his fist. Hit the railing and went all the way out to Hanson it on the mound. They'll check this ball as Matt Martinez <laughs> comes in. I would too. He's going to throw it out. You know, well, you'd, I, as a hitter right there, I'd be screaming, don't let him throw that ball because he could have a scrape on it. At this at this level, I'm not sure if pitchers understand what to do with the scrape. <laughs> but at the next level, definitely. <laughs> so <laughs> throw that ball out. That ball's done. One, two now from Hanson looking for the strikeout. Off of the fist. Right side into the stands. Wind blows it way into the stands and remain one and two. E fan. Got the cream colored uni jersey on just off the chest. Well, you know, Look it's, at, you it's, can't believe it. it's hard to catch a ball today in this breeze. Can't believe it. Tough on the fans as well. Yeah. Smith digs back in. Longhorns at double play depth in the infield. The one two upstairs count evens. Being a little timid with that slider. Normally we see that slider down in the dirt, in the brown turf. Some bite on it. Those ones we've seen tonight have just kind of just floated in there. Not much bite on it. The two two coming. Got in on him. Fouled it back. Seventh pitch of the at bat coming. Boy, you want to make something happen here. You really don't want to go 3 2. 
And as a hitter, I know you are coming at me. See what Smith does here. Popped up. Tough play. Coming on is Ellis. Puts it away for the second out of the inning and not deep enough to get the job done. One big out to get for Hanson. The ball came almost all the way back to the infield. It's, it, Zeke, this, this is a day that playing fly balls, you would much rather see the ball hit on the ground as a defender. <laughs> Bryce Holmes will step in. He's had a good year so far. 316, he's driven in five. To left, that's through. One run will score. Second run coming to the plate. Throw by Kennedy to the plate. In time. As he guns him down at the plate, Vines thrown out. The weather had a lot to do with that, Greg. Yeah, a ball hit on the ground to Kennedy. In left field, he's going to make a strong throw, accurate throw, the main thing right here. Gets the runner, Sam takes the lead, 1-0. Bottom of the first inning, 1-0, Sam. is head coach David Pierce in his fourth year. You can see his record, 116-74 and 74 here at the University of Texas. His team down 1-0. And that's not that unusual. Four straight game that Sam has scored in the first inning. And you look at Texas's lineup, they've been very good all year long scoring in the first inning. The only real difference in the lineup is who's hitting in the fourth spot, Cam Williams, with his big blow on Sunday. He has really swung the bat well, driven in five runs, no bigger than those two he drove in in the 10th. Yeah, when we talked to him post game, he's like, I, I was made for this moment. I, like, I love that in Cam Williams. He, he was. Heard saying, get it to me, get it to me in the dugout. So a big home run, a walk off, exciting moment for Cam Williams here at Texas in his early career here at Texas. They'll be facing Jack Rogers. He's making his second appearance of the year. See his one appearance, he went an inning. He's got an explosive fastball. He's going to be somewhere, if he's right, in the mid 90s, 92 to 94. He's got a good changeup. He, he was recruited as a two way player, Zeke. It, it, you know, this is the first real opportunity he's got to, to throw is this year. So he's, as a junior, well, he's been it, around for a while. His really first opportunity since he's been at Sam Houston State. Just his fourth appearance in his career, but second this year. Austin Todd, the senior from Round Rock, will step in. Talk about scoring first, and that's what Sam got on the board, but Texas has outscored their opponents eight to one in the first inning so far this season. Foul straight back. Just seeing that ball in the air, and you're out playing defense, and you come in, you're thinking to yourself, the only place I can hit it out of the park's right down the right field line. So I'm gonna try to get on top of it. Oh, Sam Houston State, especially Kalzer out in the center, understands the win and under, understanding his speed playing fairly shallow. 2 1. Back stairs. And it's 3 and 1 to Todd. Anything hit the left, it should hold it up. Anything hit the right, it'll keep pushing it towards the line. Rogers, 3 1 delivery. Popped up, tough play. May be pushed all the way in the stands here. Ball gets up in the air, comes back to the field to play. A nice job of surrounding that and coming up with it. Not an easy play by Holmes, and he made it. He thought off the bat it could get pushed into the stands, but see right here, he's got to stop and come back towards the field to play. Good job of keeping your eye on the ball. No doubt. That brings the senior from Nacogdoches, Duke Ellis, to the plate. To a fantastic start this year. 400 on the year. Scored seven times. 6'2", 180-pounder. Hey. 
when you haven't thrown consistently, Zeke, for a couple of years where you've been an offensive player, it's got to be a, a little bit of adjustment going back to the mound again. What well, is? I mean, I'm bullpens, it's your inner squads. But you can see the type of arm Rogers has. Is it kind of a three-quarter delivery from the left hand? Jay Sirianni likes having that extra arm on his staff. Breaking ball underneath it. Stays upstairs and the count evens at two and two. The 2-2, two -two, way outside. The payoff, just threw it by. First strikeout for Rogers. Didn't try to overthrow that fastball. Pitch before dropped a little bit underneath it. This one stays with it. Right after you, you can't catch up. Really good view when you watch Rogers from behind home plate of him throwing the ball across his body. We'll get to it as Zubia steps in. We get the home plate view when he's behind it. He steps to the dugout, the Longhorn dugout, and then comes back across his body. It's really, for hitters sometimes, really hard to pick that ball up. Change it. Over the top up. Zubia, the junior from Richmond. He's driven in 11. Already this season, eight ball games. This is outside. It's, it's interesting because we'll be able to show the front of the mound and where Rogers is landing and where Hanson is landing, are, you can see the two separate different pivot holes where one is more straight to the plate, one right there. You can see, and one is more to the inside part of, to the first base side. to center. Moving over to right, Holmes has a beat on it, puts it away. One, two, three, goes Texas. In the bottom of the third, we go to the second. Sam Houston State up, one nothing. The Bearcats of Sam Houston State, well, they've been pretty good offensively, scoring a run in the first inning in four straight ball games and jumped out with one but really, truly, Texas limited the damage because it could have been more. For sure. I mean, the uh, second batter of the game, a pop fly dropped in center by Duke Ellis, a rare drop ball by Duke, and then a base hit and a walk. And they had them loaded with one out, so yeah, limited the, dam the damage there with just one. Honored will step in, Eric. So getting the start in left field tonight. First pitch swinging on the ground to Williams. Cross to Zubia has to come off the back. No problem there. 5 3 on the put out. 7 8 9 do for the Bearcats here in the second. Swinging early. First pitch. And good location there by Hanson. The fastball inside tied him up. A nice job by Zubia to see the throw. Knows he's got time. Comes off the bag. There'll be times when first baseman will try to stay on the bag and, and miss the ball. And when you have time, Duke Zach did the exact right thing right there. Came off, had time to get back on the bat. Gavin Johnson steps in, senior from San Antonio. First team all conference. Off to a little bit of slow start with the bat. But talking to their staff, felt like that's just a slow start. I'd like to get your senior year off and get going, but sometimes. Doesn't necessarily start the way you want to, but a lot of baseball out front for both of these clubs. Bender in there for a strike, and it's one and two. 291 hitter a year ago.
the one two. Fastball upstairs. It's two and two. But one was asking for that ball up. A little too high. Yeah. The two two. Got him with a good pinball. First strikeout for Pete Hansen. Two gone here in the second. That's the good one. Sometimes it, it takes a few to get a feel. And see where Silas Ardwan set up. He hit the right at the bottom of that mitt. Right here, you see it starts down the middle of the plate and breaks away. D. Shelton steps in. His first start of the year. Second base. One for three. Scored a run. That time of the year where you're going to get a look at different guys. For Sam Houston State, boy, they, they got conference play coming in a hurry here. Upstairs. Bit of time he doesn't have rhythm and some of this is trying to get the sign in downstairs just hasn't been that good rhythm where got an idea with the sign and get on the mound and get ready to attack the two one upstairs and it's three and one The one you want. You got two two outs. Right now, if you walk this one, you can get back to the leadoff. Top of the order. The center playable. Fading to right. And put away. One, two, three. Go Sam Houston State in the second. One nothing Bearcats. Coming to the plate, bottom of the ninth inning. Tenth, so extra inning. Tenth. It was tenth. Would it stay fair is the only question. Yeah. Comes all the way around, and then they say, hey, look, no, we got to review it. After review, stands up. Walk off. Two-run shot. Cam Williams will lead it off here for Texas in the bottom of the second. Texas went one, two, three in the first. Trail here, one, nothing. Fat Tuesday. It's got to be exciting to hit a, a walk off, even just a base hit, but especially a home run because everyone's waiting for you right at home plate when you get there. Usually you're running around the bases and they're trying to catch up with you or something, but make sure you touch them all. Great moment right there because the excitement. Extra inning walk off. Yeah. Come in from Florida, Dallas Baptist. San Jacinto, the way he came to Texas. He is a junior transfer. And outstanding at third base as well. Rogers, 0 1 delivery. Catches the corner. You talk about him being across his body. What happens, I guess, for a right handed hitter zone? You see the fastball when it's in, it's kind of at an angle coming in at you. And then when he keeps it away, it's going to have more of a, a sinking movement. On the ground to second. Shelton. Over to Smith for the first out of the inning. I, it's just left handers who threw across their body for me personally. And I've talked to other right handed hitters. It was just difficult to see the ball, to pick it up. To pick it up. And, And then for lefties, it starts out behind you. Yeah, especially if he's got a spinner. Martini will step in from Richmond, 6'2", 195-pound freshman. Fouls it straight back. He's been good offensively. 269 as he steps in here. Homer, he's driven in five. 
Real consistent defensively. It's been a good start in the first nine ball games of the year for the true freshman. The one one from Rogers. For a strike. Doesn't have a lot of rust on him for a guy that hadn't pitched a whole lot in two years. No, <laughs> Did pretty well into the gap on his horse, able to get to it. Bonnert does a nice job of running that ball down. That's that wind. Well, that's the case of it holding it up. Holding right there. it up. From our angle, that ball was started to slice away from Bonnert out there in left field. But see here, that ball's. Easily in the gap, and then right about there, it just holds up enough for Bonnet to get under. So two gone in the inning for Eric Kennedy. Lefty-lefty match up here. Sophomore from Tampa, Florida. Bunts out in front. Going to be tough to get an out? Yes, they do. Nice play, Jack Rogers. I didn't think there was any way he was going to get an out there. Getting off the mound, fielding that position. Is Jack Rogers ball has it this ball kind of stops on him. He's going to barehand it not as easy as he made that play look. The Hawk is out coming out of the north. Gusting at times probably to 25 miles an hour and it's already been a factor in this ball game. one nothing. Keith Borland, Greg Swindell, glad you're with us here at UFCU Dishfalk Field. Uh, Sam Houston State leads the Texas Longhorns 1-0. Back to the top of the order. Hanson out for his third inning of work. He's worked three innings before, Greg, but this will be the first time he'll punch through that number of 38, 40 pitches in a game, and I'm sure they have him on somewhat of a pitch count tonight. Yeah, they want to see what he looks like as a starting pitcher. And then knowing what you have in store this weekend down in Houston. Quickly 0-2 to McKenzie. Her ball first pitch, change up second pitch. Got him set up for a heater in. On some low. Break a ball over the top of it. Good pitch right there. Great location. Second strikeout for Hansen. That's what we're talking about when we you talk about the pitchability and poise and threw him a curveball or change up and that slider right there. Three pitches, three quality pitches. He just gets the out. Yeah, that bat right on that back foot. You go over the top of it as a right-handed hitter. Gowser popped up. Shoots looked to be the second out of the inning. Ellis couldn't come up with it. Ended up leading to an unearned run in the first. Ball just misses outside. And, you know, these Kowser and Ty Madden, they've known each other their whole life. Cy Ranch High School right there in Cypress, Texas. Looks like they've spent a little time on vacation, vacation together. And then when one decided to, on Texas and one in Sam Houston. Now they've faced each other last year. Kowser with a double off tie, his first at bat, got him out his second at bat. I don't know where that last pitch was. It wasn't called a strike. No. Downstairs. Colton. Out in front now, three and one. Corbin Vines awaits on deck. Only one walk in his career so far. That was in this ball game for Hanson. And the 3-1 here. Right down Broadway. Count goes full. Don't think you're going to throw that one in that spot again. Make it look like that. I would try it. Oh, I'd make it look like that with a little band in it. Once it in. Came back to it on the ground. 6-3 on the putout. Nice stretch by Zuby at the end. 
Well, that little fade on it from Faltini. Zach able to get all the six three frame out there to get it. Just fade over there and Zach had to get all the way out there. Stay on the back. That's a nice job right there. Maintaining. Corbin Vine singled his last time up. Inside. And he was thrown out at the plate. The base hit by Holmes by Eric Kennedy. It ended the first. On the ground. Baltini to his right. Across his body in time. Made it look easy. Seven in a row retired by Hanson. We go to the bottom of the third, one nothing. David Pierce, the head coach, University of Texas. First head coaching job, 2012 through 14 at Sam. Three regional bursts uh, he was there. His record, 121 and 63 in those three seasons. Did an outstanding job. Moved from there on to Tulane and then on to Texas. So homecoming of sorts here for Coach Pierce. Yeah, now Jay Siriani. The head coach. He spent a couple years there the, as an assistant, as the pitching coach. And now Sam Houston goes where to Lafayette to play the old cat coach there, Coach Dex. See the numbers right there. Bottom third of the order, due to face Rogers, who has been really good. Two way player. First year he's gotten to pitch very much in his career. He's been really good so far. Good fastball. It's a little change up. Occasional breaking ball. Into his third inning, he had three innings total coming in. Arduan, freshman, Moss Bluff, steps back in. Outside corner for a strike. Salas has driven in three, scored a couple of times. Chop foul. Rogers one two delivery. Fouled off. Out of play. Boy, about 2.30 or 3 this afternoon. It was gorgeous. No breeze here in town. About 70 degrees. So good. It's not a blue norther. There's nothing with it, but it's got, it brought some wind and some cooler temperatures. 1-2 delivery. Hit well out to right. Coming on is Holmes. Can't hit a ball any harder than that, but it didn't pay off. When you start looking at games one in the state of Texas, Sam is right there. I mean, they really have. You can see fifth most wins by Division One team in the state since 2017 through 19. So Texas right below them, six below them at 108. They've made some noise in the NCAA's as well. Reached a super regional a couple years ago. Have won the Southland three out of four years. Doug Hodo will step in. Freshman from Bernie, right field tonight. Over the top of that, he's done a nice job of changing speeds. Difficult to pick up again across his body. The ball seems to be coming out of a different arm slot. Up and away. His only inning of work this year. The one inning he struck out the side. So obviously tough to pick up. Longhorns looking for their first base run.
Three one delivery in there for a strike. Right at the top of the zone. Upper outer. I think it had plate. Where do we find you, Joker? Might not even have that. We get the replay up here, though. Now the payoff. Upstairs, ball four. So that'll bring Murphy Staley to the plate. Seven walk by Doug Hodo this season. He's got a good eye at the plate. Find ways to get on base. That's it. Staley steps in. Homer driven in a couple. First pitch in there for a strike. It's that tricky little slide step, too, where it could give the indication going home and just boom, throw it to first. Got to be real careful over there as a base run. Ball catches the inside corner quickly. It's 0-2. Upstairs is such a huge plus for left-handers to slow the running game down, even if. You don't have a great move, Greg. You, it just, it, as a runner, it just puts in your mind, ooh, what is he going to do? It's also about just varying times to the plate. Hold it an extra half second. Over the top of that for the strikeout. Second of the ball game for Rodgers. Back to the top of the order. Step off. You don't have to have great moves to hold base runners. Look like a change up that just floated back over the middle of the plate right there. Todd fly to right his first time up. 40th pitch coming for Rogers. Rick first base into the ball game in the left. Longhorns with something working here with two outs. Second time around, Todd didn't take much time. First pitch he saw. It looked like the same changeup that just got Staley coming across his body. Rogers, that one came back across the plate again. Lefty lefty matchup here. Ellis, the strikeout victim, his first time up. Third inning, Rogers in the stretch for the first time. Try to use that left field line for Duke. The other pitcher throwing a lot of pitches away. That right there, the breaking ball away. Look for something out over the plate and take it the other way. I think that approach when you're lefty lefties the best approach popped up this time could be difficult a lot of people looking out for it over McKenzie able to put it away in that NZ inning Texas threatens but comes up empty in the third a third of the game in the books one nothing Bearcats Bearcats, top of the fourth inning. We take this opportunity to go down and visit with first-year head coach Jay Seriani. And it, Jay, when you you look at it, first of all, congratulations on, on the job. Now it's a lot different than just being a pitching coach as long as you've been in this game, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. You know, uh, my brain really hasn't turned off since it happened in July, so uh, it's been interesting. Right, coach, you, we talk about uh, before the game that sometimes you can make 
easy mistakes, but you, with, with Jack Rogers on the mound, you said you had to go and make, put him in as a pitcher and a DH, and that's just in case if he comes out of the game as one, he can stay in as the other. That's some people just take it for granted that you know that already. Yeah, it, you know, it looks simple, and then all of a sudden you're like, well, I better make sure I'm doing it right. <laughs> Last thing, Coach, I mean, with Jack, it, uh, he's a two-way guy. You're going to use him it, right now. He's just cruising along. You have a pitch count on him? Uh, we do. We have a little one in mind. Um, you know, it's going to kind of depend on the stress, too, of, of how many times he's got to deal with traffic and, and all that. So. Well, thanks for taking the time and visiting with him. Good luck to you and your team the rest of the year. Absolutely. Thanks, guys. Yeah, thank you. Bye-bye. As Pete Hansen out for his fourth inning of work, facing Jack Rogers, it's interesting. Every coach I talk to talks about stressful pitches and unstressful pitches, and I don't think we talk enough about that. Well, it makes a difference. I mean, yeah, you can, well, I, I can tell you one thing. You can go out and throw 110 pitches and be in trouble every inning, and your body is is just going to be, next day is just going to be, ugh. And then you can go out there and throw 130 pitches and not have any traffic. And Pete Hansen not happy with not getting that call. And throw 130 pitches and, and be fine. 2-2, two, two, fouled off, back to the screen. Yeah, I, I, I just think there's, you just hear so many guys talk about that. You know, it, you, know you look the other night, Ty Madden on Saturday was in the afternoon. Threw 105 pitches and none from the stretch. Nope. So there's not very stressful pitches in that. And you don't have to always have runners on for it to be stressful. It's just like you get a lot of deep counts, three two counts where you where you're trying to make that perfect pitch and they keep fouling them off. And a lot of times it's it's when you when you put max effort a little too much into it. And that's usually what you do when you have traffic on the bases. Seventh pitch of the at bat coming here. Got him with a breaking ball. Third strikeout for Hanson. And you're seeing emotion now, the freshman. Upset that he didn't get the call and comes right back though. A couple pitches later with a good off speed pitch. And gets his counterpart out. Smith steps in. Fly to center. His first time up. Off to a fantastic start this season. 51 now for Pete Hansen. I would think 75 would be a good number. See if Hansen can get through five. Mm -hmm. If he can have a, if he can get through this inning. I would think 75 would be a good number in his first outing. There was a herd of pitchers headed to the bullpen, so yeah, he could be getting close to that number with the amount of pitchers that ran to the bullpen. Just to be ready. On the ground to third, Williams. Across to Zubia, 5-3 on the putout. Williams, since the base hit that Vines was thrown out at the plate, has retired every batter. Eight in a row. Strikeout in each of the innings. Four ground balls, one fly out since the runner thrown out at home. Holmes was the batter that got the base hit. To left, it's last time up. It's in there for a strike. Really, truly has looked himself, didn't look himself in that first inning, first career start, makes a difference. Did you, you talked about it, the emotions. It's all fouled off right side. You, you come in as a reliever, you're down there and you might throw 25 pitches and you're ready to get in the yeah. game. It's all about timing, about pacing yourself. And how many throws, long toss throws do I get? How many times, I mean, he was, we saw him a couple times, look at the clock to see what time it was. Yeah, he, he didn't take him long to get ready. Fourth strike out of the ball game. One, two, three. Goes Sam Houston in the fourth. One nothing Bearcats. Longhorns come to bat in the fourth. Texas baseball on Longhorn Network. 
is presented by Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. one nothing Bearcats, bottom of the fourth. You know downtown on six, and we see that video right there. Bad Tuesday tonight downtown. Some parties going on, I'm sure. What's Party up? going on here at UFCU Dish Flock Field. one nothing Bearcats at this point in this party. Jack Rogers' first pitch strikes has been really good. Eight out of 11 tonight. And Zubia steps in. Eight out of 12 now as he misses outside. It'll be Zubia Williams. Altini. Upstairs. Activity in the Bearcat bullpen. I would think that they they were looking at a number for Rogers. 45th pitch coming right here. Well out of play right side. Gonna stay up. Uh, no. <laughs> souvenir, man. Get that souvenir. Give it to that little boy that's running behind you. Too late. Too late. Off of the back foot. That didn't feel good right there. Now he's going down to find it. Somewhere. Security. <laughs> Two and two to Zach. Seven hits on the season, a homer. He's driven in 11. I think that one got Johnson got him right in the mass, didn't it? Oh, is that what it was? It really bounced back. Yeah. I thought it got off Zubia. Little professional courtesy. Give the catcher a little time and we'll do it again, 2 2. The center hit pretty well, but Kowser with a beat on it. Puts it away for the first out of the inning. In the air to left center, left. It's not going to go anywhere tonight. We saw one hit on a line by Ardwan. It's still, well, that was to right. Cam Williams will step in. Right Williams grounded to second his first time up. By Faltini his yeah. first time up. That was more of a line, and it stayed up. Stairs. Popped up. Tough play. I don't think you'll have a play on this. Wind pushes it back on top of the clamshell. You mentioned it, Zeke. I thought that line by Cam Williams, I was made for this moment. This was a pretty good one. <laughs> the weather department says it's blowing at 10 miles an hour. I beg to differ. I would say gust to 25. Two one to Williams. Foul back. Count evens at two and two. We'll have another Texas Tuesday next Tuesday. The Arizona Wildcats coming to town. Bear down. U of A coming in town. Last time I saw them personally it was here in 1986 restore and I was out of the game in about four innings. They go on and they win the national championship that year. 2-2. Two -two. Got him upstairs with the heater. Third strikeout for Rogers. Climb the ladder on. Wait for it. Be down. Got the fastball up. Can't catch up. Altini hit a ball right on the button his first time up. Just stayed up in the air. Right. 
Make a right turn. Which misses outside. Long look in. Now the 1 0 delivery. Pop to right. This is going to be a tough play for Holmes. Flating over to the line. Puts it away. One, two, three. Goes Texas in the fourth. We'll visit with head coach David Pierce when we come back. One nothing, Sam Houston State. Use one nothing, Sam Houston State. As we go to the top of the fifth, we take this opportunity to go down to the Longhorn dugout and visit with the head coach, fourth year head coach David Pierce. Coach, first of all, I'm going to ask you a couple questions. The first one is, do we always have to have win when we play baseball at Dishfall Field? Man, it's a tough <laughs> one tonight too. It is. The other part of that is. You know, you're building up, you get to this point. Were you looking, did you say something to the guys about what's going forward this weekend? Is that one of those situations you look at when you're playing a Tuesday game with what's ahead of you? Well, not at all. I mean, it's all about tonight for us. Uh, you know, they, they know what's coming up, so we want to really focus on Sam Houston State. They're a good ball club. Um, we'll get our hands full right now. Hey, Coach, you got a freshman battery out here right now. I mean, that's yeah. that's pretty pretty awesome, and they're handling their own. Yeah, I mean, Pete's been outstanding. He really threw the slider in the curveball well last inning and uh, settled in. He's a command guy, so uh, you know, I like what he's doing. Coach, what, what kind of pitch count is for his first career start? Uh, what, what kind of pitch count is he on? <laughs> he's about at it. <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah. there you go. Thanks. You know, he had a good inning and uh, he felt good. He, he, yeah. he hasn't had any stress, so. Uh, no, it's good. Thanks for taking the time, David. Good luck the rest of the ball game. I appreciate it. Yeah, I, I had to ask the question. Oh, yeah. I mean, because, you know, it's his first time he's been out there. He's about at it. I like, again, another coach talking about stress. Yeah, I mean, the first just, inning, you, you had bases loaded, but since then, you see right there, he's retired nine in a row. 2 1. We showed we showed Colton Kalzer and, and Ty Madden, Eric Bonnard also from Cy Ranch High School. <laughs> pretty, there, there's four on the roster from one high school. That's pretty impressive. <laughs> a pretty good baseball team. Good running catch earlier in the game for Eric. Ryan Peters, a right-handed pitcher, freshman from Cy Ranch, to center. Duke has a beat on it for the first out of the inning. Bottom third due as Gavin Johnson strides to the plate. I always hate to use the word trap game because Sam's a good ball club. But, you know, when the schedule came out, you looked at that about going to Minute Maid, playing in Big League Park, and playing LSU, Arkansas, the SEC, by the way. Yes. Well, it's a Big 12 SEC, Matt, all yeah. weekend. Yeah. I just think Texas has been so successful in, in the past few years by winning the midweek games. Yeah. And that's I, I just didn't think you can overlook this type of ball game because if you want to be successful, these you got to win these as well. Coach Pierce's formula play 500 Friday and Saturday 70% on Sunday and win 90% of your Tuesday games you're going to be playing in, in June <laughs> Wednesday count they got a few Wednesday yeah, games. Gonna, yeah you're right. and a Monday game Let's see over the weekend seven o'clock minute made both Friday and Saturday night three o'clock Sunday afternoon and then right back here on LHN Arizona and then by the way Cal State Fullerton. That's, that's no fair right there. U of A knocks us out in 86. They win the national championship. And then Augie beats us in 84 for the national championship. I might ask for those four off. <laughs> nah. You want to go play? I'm just kidding. Good breaking ball there. Fifth strikeout for Hanson. And after that first inning, he has been spectacular. It seems he's, he's gone a lot of off speed. That's a career high, his fifth strikeout. Each pitch, each out is all setting career highs for Pete. 
throw 66 pitches combined in his two outings. Now it's 67 in this ballgame. The 1 1. Let's fake the bunt. Pulls the bat back. Shelton. One for four on this season, getting his first start, as we mentioned, his first time up. Pull foul. Two and two. One, two, three in the second. One, two, three in the third. One, two, three in the fourth. And now a pitch away from being one, two, three in the fifth. Pretty good comeback after the first four or six batters reach base. The 2-2. Two -two. Got him upstairs. Six strikeout. Outstanding job by the true freshman. One nothing. Bearcats. Pitching the story in this ball game so far for Sam Houston State. Jack Rogers with three innings in his career. Coming out for his fifth inning. And has thrown the ball well, using his fastball and change up effectively, giving up only one hit and a walk. Pete Hansen ran into a little trouble in the first inning, giving up a couple of hits and, and a run, but since the first inning has retired 12 in a row, six by strikeout, four perfect innings after the first for Pete Hansen. We go to the bottom of the fifth. It will be six, seven, and eight due for Texas here against Jack Rogers. Look over, he's ready to go. Got that intense look. Peeking over the top of that glove. Ready to go for his fifth inning of work. Trying to qualify himself for the victory if the Bearcats can hold on here. Leading one nothing. We think both of these guys are right at the end of their windows. Activity already up and going. The Sam Houston State bullpen. There's someone tossing in yes. the Texas bullpen. On the ground, back through the box. Eric Kennedy with a leadoff base runner. First of the night for the Longhorns. Could be the last for Jack Rogers. You know, send him back out there, see what he can do. But ball hit hard back up the middle and a leadoff base runner for Texas. Adwan Silas will step in. Boy, he hit a ball as hard as you could hit one his last time up. Lined out. See how Coach Pierce wants to play this. Could be bunt situation. Not bunting. First pitch in there for a strike. Wesniski. Cole Wesniski is the right hander up and throwing. Breaking balls just misses inside. There's Cole. Out of the side fair high school in the Cypress area. Rogers set. Checks the runner Kennedy with good speed. Now just a toss over. First time we've seen him throw over tonight. Don't think that was his best move. Kennedy always a threat to go. Popped up on the hit and run. We'll do it again one and two. Little weights on deck. He walked his last time up. We talked about Sunday. Good offensive teams have production at both the top and the bottom of the order. Texas needs to start getting some help at the bottom of this order. Hudo leading that 10th inning off with a single. Sure did. Up on the railing is Pete Hansen. Texas bullpen getting hot. 
2 2. Off right side out of play. Yeah, I would think his day is done. He'd love to see his team put a two spot on the board. Get that first career W. Silas digs back in. Steps off. That's your job as a base runner. If you can take Rogers' attention away from the hitter, you're doing the hitter a favor. It's working. Right side. Do it again. Seventh stay. pitch of the at bat coming. He's gonna stay up there. Plinko. Oh, it did. Winner. Wonder what number that was. <laughs> Hopefully the big one. <laughs> Texas looking for two. Ripped into center. Bowser cuts it off. Kennedy on his way to third. Here comes the throw to third. Gets away. Moving up to second. Can't move up to second. Excellent base running from Kennedy right there. Only a couple of guys can make advance right there. Hey, we're not going to see. Maybe one or two more on the Texas team would even attempt this by Eric Kennedy, but good job by Silas has now hit the ball hard both times up tonight. Cows are not only field his position, got a strong arm, but fortunately for Texas and Eric Kennedy, the ball got there at the exact same time. Yeah, when you're making that big turn, as Rogers' day is done, when you're making that big turn, that throw from center, you're going to come right into that throw. So a great opportunity for Texas here. Runners at first and third, and Sam's going to the bullpen. We'll give you the new pitcher when we come back. Jim and Joanne. Well, Jack Rogers out of the game as the pitcher, but will remain in the game as the DH. Boy, really did a nice job until the back-to-back -back base hits here in the bottom of the fifth. He's responsible for both base runners. One walk, struck out three. He only had base runners in the third and now here in the fifth. But he's responsible for those two base runners. And Lipniski comes into the game. Make it fourth appearance of the season see the six innings he went four innings against St. Mary's first game of the season he's given up seven hits one walk and six strikeouts of the Cypress Texas product it's a guy sinker slider guy coming out of the bullpen see if he can get some outs here two right-handed hitters do for Texas with nobody out in the inning Texas trailing one nothing You know, you, you, you want to look at guys, and so both head coaches were looking at starting pitchers tonight, and what we've seen, I think both of them can handle the job. I mean, Rogers trying to build some arm strength and do it. He looked very good to him. Well, a couple that haven't thrown much at this level, just the three innings for Rogers in his career at Sam Houston State, and Pete Hansen making his first career start with only four innings under his belt. So yeah, they both handled it very well. Only five hits in the ball game and so far just one total run. Doug will step in. Hodo is walked and stranded at second. Tying run 90 feet away here. One nothing ball game, bottom of the fifth inning. Snisky will step in. The signs checks the runners. Slider misses down and away for ball one. Only four hits on the season for Doug, but as you mentioned, on base percentage of 393. Seven walks. This is outside, and quickly it's two and over. Got to look for that fastball in one spot right here. 286 with runners in scoring position on the year. Want to go out of the zone and do the pitcher a favor. 
He's shown two straight sliders. Two zero downstairs, and it's three and zero. What do you got to do when you come out of the bullpen, Greg? Strikes. Three and zero now. I think he was looking for a freshman to be aggressive right there with the first two pitches to possibly get a ground ball or swing and miss, but. Doug Hutto, like we said, with seven walks, has had a good eye at the plate. 3 0. Back down Broadway, and it's 3 and 1. Hutto has great speed, really tough to double up. Paracats at double play depth in the infield. They'll trade two for one right here. Inside ball four, and that loads the bases. Staley will step in. He was a strikeout victim his first time up. Nobody out in the inning. Texas trailing here one nothing in the bottom of the fifth. The biggest threat of the ball game by far by Texas. Corners up will probably come to the plate. Back to the mound will come to the plate. Playing for two in the middle. Fastball yeah. misses outside for ball one. Yeah. Murphy stands right up on top of the plate. Right-handed hitter. Sitting right up there on top of it. to second for one the relay to first is not in time they don't get a double play to run scores I think that's one that's, that Bynes should have come to the plate that was tough right there you don't know if it's caught in the air on the hop yeah every, all the runners had to freeze see the ball hit firm just on a hop didn't even look to home plate right there Throw was high of second. Touching the break. Getting one off the knee of Smith over there at first. So it's another run. So first and third now. Back to Todd in the top of the order. I think that's one that Vines, he could think about it again, would come to the plate and get the out. Outside for ball one. Go ahead, run 90 feet away now. Todd with good speeds, tough to double up. Staley at first. Break the ball, misses downstairs. 2 0. Oh. Normally in this count, you would come out of your shoes, try to hit one hard, but on a night like tonight, that one would have to be to right. Todd's been going to right field. 2-0. Downstairs, and it's 3-0. No action in the Bearcat bullpen. Zniski has struggled with command since coming into the game. Lost it four for five with seven RBIs with runners in scoring position this year. Green light had a good hack at it. Every game for Austin Todd. He's reached base safely. Rip to right. Down for a base hit. Texas has a two to one lead. Five for six, eight RBIs now with runners in scoring position for Austin Todd. Gets the 3 0 green light, fouls it off. 
goes down and gets his thumb right there. A good piece of hitting. He was thinking about the other way right there. You just could see it. 3-0. He's thinking pull. And then at that point, he had a big gap on the other side. Knocks it through that time. Both of those runs are going to be charged to Rogers. I believe they have anybody warming up at this point. So this conversation is going to have to get hot in a hurry. Getting hot in a hurry, <laughs> but right back to the mound. You know, a ball game can change in a heartbeat, folks, and we just saw it in this ball game. It, it happened and quickly and all of a sudden. Oh, yeah. I mean, you got a, a pitcher for Sam Houston State who hasn't had that much experience on the mound in his career, and he sends him back out there for the fifth. He gives up a couple of hits. Now you're in trouble. Your bullpen comes in. What do you say? Throwing strikes. They were not throwing strikes. Gets themselves in more trouble. Texas catches a break with the, the goofy play up the mid, uh, to second. And all of a sudden, it's a 2-1 lead. Yeah, you, you look at it now. Got an opportunity to get some separation, and that's what you got to do. When you get advantage, got to take advantage. Yeah, Texas was able to do that with walks and a couple errors over the weekend. Right now, it could be a, a big inning for Texas if they can capitalize on the mistakes. Wozniski stays in the game. Duke Ellis will step in. Ellis, strike, struck out, popped up. Two runs on four hits for Texas. Three of those four hits in this frame. Wisniewski just does not have a feel for the baseball. Chop, gonna be a difficult play. Have to take it himself. One unassisted, turns and looks. Everybody moves up 90 feet. So big out right here with Zubia coming to the plate, Greg. For the Bearcats, they want to stay, pretty much stay in this game. This is, you got to get an out right here and make this a 2-1 game going into the final four innings. Yeah, two out RBI is demoralizing for the opponent. Oh, it is. Not real easy on a pitcher either. No. Slight shift for Zach. And he's going to hit it the other way. Throw to the plate. Not in time. 4 1 Texas. Second baseman Shelton up the middle, but this one right here is that just fights off. It's a line drive to right. Austin Todd had the arm waving the whole time coming up. Throw wasn't was cut off. So not a throw play at the plate. Texas putting up a four spot. RBIs 12 and 13 for Zach Zubia. Switch hitting Cam Williams will step in now. From the left side. Four hits in the inning, four runs in the inning. Over the top of it for strike one. Long pause, the 0-1 outside. Interesting term that you use, pitchers know that. Pitching is a lot of feel to go with everything else. And you were talking about coming in out of the bullpen, sometimes you don't have a feel for the, how the ball's coming out of your hands. Then could it, is it the weather, is it the, the surroundings, the mound? I mean, there's a lot of things that can go into it. And then when you're out of the zone a few times, now the worst of all, <laughs> your brain starts to get that's a six, that's six inches yeah. in between your ears. Ripped on the ground into right. Fifth hit of the inning. Zuby on his way to third. Runners at first and third now. And the Longhorns will bat around here in the fifth. 
Never looked up coming around second. Coach Pierce had, had him held up. Fortunately, the throw was late. Ball hit hard by Smith. Never looked. And just a slight hesitation, but by then it was too late and just kept going. Altini will step in. He is lined to left center, and fly to right. Ninth batter of the inning for Texas. Over the top, count evens at one and one. We talked about two out RBIs. How about back to back big knocks with two outs? Yeah, it was a two one game. Now it's a four one game. Hit pretty well to center. Those are going back. Comes up with it, puts it away. But Texas offense got it going here in the fifth. Eric Kennedy leads it off. Silas Ardlon behind him, and then a couple of two out base hits, and we got a 4 1 game. With hunger. Dancing with the Texas Tuesday start. The freshman out of California had a shaky first, but after the first, found the breaking ball. Spotted up the fastball and really pitched well, retiring 12 in a row, four perfect innings from the second through the fifth, and asked Coach if he could have that fifth, and he got it, and now Texas puts up a four spot in line for the win if Texas holds on. I don't think that'll be the last of the career wins for Pete Hansen. That's just my feelings, and they will go to the bullpen. Kobe Kubelchek will come into the game. This is a young man. Been competing for a starting job. 1 0 in the season. You can see the numbers. No ERA at the time. Big thing for, for me with Kubacek is strikes. Yeah, I mean, he, he's got good stuff. He's just, the ability to pitch ahead makes a huge difference for him. He did that in his appearance this season. Went three innings in that appearance, making his second of the season. Had some ankle issues. Slowed him down early in the spring, but now 100%. He'll be facing the top of the order here. Kinsey will step in off the end of the bat foul. Bearcats got one in the first, threatening for more. Kennedy threw vines out at the plate to end the inning since then. Have not had a base runner. One unearned run in the first and the two hits all in the first inning for the Bearcats. Nothing since. Good breaking ball there. McKenzie down one and two. McKenzie, Kowser, and Vine here top of the order for Sam Houston. After Texas just put a four spot on the board. Stairs, count evens. Three out of the next four hitters, left-handed hitters. Got him over the top. Second strikeout for McKenzie, first for Kubacek. It's not an easy spot to put a slider for a lefty. Down and in. Perfect spot, though. Gets under the bat of McKenzie. 13 in a row, retired by Texas pitching. Colton Kowser will step in. Reached on an error and scored in the first. It's grounded to short, 0 for 2. This is outside. Golden Spike watch list. 
big time prospect. Sam Houston State. Got a lot of tools. Which is in there for a strike. Good mix right now. I don't think he's thrown the same pitch twice in a row. Out of the field when that bullpen gate opened. One, two. Back through the box. Lift that one up. Good hitters are going to make you pay. Left it up and off the plate. It's Kowser. Reach out for this one. Well, that's about the only way. I mean, not the only way. You can handle it other ways, but if it's up, it's a lot easier yep. to get the bat to it. Well, then Vine steps in. Vine singled in the first. He's grounded to short. Jack Rogers, the DH, who was the starting pitcher, waits on deck. Juan does a nice job keeping that in front. Stairs. Good hitter's pitch coming. Three and zero. Oh. Quite came in. And Showed command with everything, and all of a sudden, he's a pitch away from bringing the tying run to the plate. Outside ball four. Well, that's exactly the scenario. Big time power, a good hitter coming to the plate, Jack Rogers. He has walked and struck out in his two plate appearances. He is the tying run now here in the top of the sixth. Find a way right here for Kubicek. Get back in the zone. Your team puts up a four spot. You want to go out and put up a zero. This is outside. Time called. It's a nice job by the true freshman. Hard one to go out and talk to his right hander. You know, he's a veteran guy. Kupacek's been around, but still, as a catcher right there, you go out. You don't need the pitching coach or the head coach to go out to give a guy a chance to take a breather. So step back. Let's think about what we're doing. And let's throw a strike. Well, the, the hit was up in the zone and five straight out of the zone. So, uh, yeah, very aware of Silas Arduan to go out and just have a conversation and get you back in the zone right there. Good. Change up by Kubitschek. Big hat to Rogers with thinking fastball. Most of the time there's a visit. The next pitch is usually a heater. From the coach. Yeah. From the coach. <laughs> Comes up empty again. Two big hacks. Now their leading RBI man he steps back in. Jack Rogers. Got him. Over the top. Second strikeout for Kubacek. Back to back to back. Right there by Kubacek. Ball with some late bite to it right there. Way out in front. Hands are already spin. Yep. Smith steps in. Came in. The leading hitter. 
for the Bearcats. 0 for 2 in this one. Pop to center. Grounded to third. Stairs for ball one. Pitchers sometimes inside step like that because they don't like the pitch <laughs> selection. I don't think I want to throw that. I think you like the lead of the runner. The 1 0. Good location there. Swing and a miss, and it's one and one. The last four pitches have been quality by Kubicek. 4-17 with runners in scoring position. Hit hard on the ground, knocked down, steps on third and ends the inning. Nice job, Cam Williams. Gets out of the jam. We go to the bottom of the six, 4-1 Texas. Texas with only one hit in the game. Well, that changes. Bases loaded, ground ball. They don't turn the double play. That scores the first run of the inning. And then Austin Todd, two out, RBI the other way. And then Zubia, two run, RBI the other way. But just like that, all with two outs, Texas takes a four to one lead. Five hits in the inning, four runs on the board. And going to the bullpen again is Sam Houston. As Kennedy will lead it off. Lance Lux comes into the game. Junior from Spring and Angelina Junior College. Six one hundred and eighty pounds. Third appearance of the season as a save. He's done six and two thirds in those two appearances prior to this, and giving up five hits, a walk, and five strikeouts. Trying to keep the Bearcats close after the Longhorns battered around in the fifth. Kennedy led the inning off with a base hit up the middle. He is one for two in this one. His first pitch, good fastball. Kennedy comes up empty. Kind of deceiving with that wind up right there. Really, real quick. Puts a lot into it. Effort. Change up, come right behind it, misses downstairs. Max effort goes with that really good change up. Yeah. Tough to see, pick up. Back up the middle. Gonna be a tough play for no chance to get Kennedy. Infield knock here at Kennedy. Second hit of the ball game. D. Shelton did a good job of getting to it. Once he held on to it a little too long, it was no chance momentum going away from the play. Smith did a good job coming off, making sure that ball didn't get into the dugout. Hardwan will step in. He has hit the ball hard twice, lined hard to right, single to center. He has also scored a run. Didn't get the call at the bottom of the zone. It's 1-0. Kennedy a threat to run at any time. Good hit and run count here. Not going. Pitches a strike. See what they 
wrist plates that the Texas fielders and hitters wear is to see the plays coming from Coach Pierce and the catcher, as there were a couple of them. One for the pitches and one for the plays. That's interesting. Samuel looked down at that wrist and then. He's got it one on the inside, one on the out. Yeah. Opens it up. One and two. Hard one. Breaking ball, knocked down by Johnson. Nice job keeping that ball in front. Veteran returning catcher. Kennedy with a great lead this time. Not going. Pitch misses downstairs, and all of a sudden the count's full. Off with this pitch. It's my opinion. Lux set. Not running. On the ground. To second, get one, and that's all they'll get. Six four on the put out. Fielder's choice. Odo will step in. Doug continues to see the ball well. When you look at his average, not very good, but it's on base percentage at 414 as he steps in here. 747 OPS right there. Right field today. That misses downstairs. A little fastball changeup out of the same spot. Looks good. Changeup really good. He hasn't been able to get ahead with the fastball to use the changeup. Can't got ahead of Kennedy, and then Kennedy laid off the changeup and got a base hit on the fastball. In there for a strike, and the count evens. Double play depth of the Bearcats here. Shot foul. One and two. Sam Houston State jumped out on top. One nothing in the first. It stayed that way to the bottom of the fifth. The Longhorns batted around and put a four spot on the board. We are here at the bottom of the six. Four one ball game. One two delivery. Gets away from Johnson. Not far enough for Hardwater to advance. I, sometimes you try to frame a pitch. I think Johnson got in there. He was really trying to frame that. Well, he was. Yeah. A little too quick. Yeah. Two two coming. Strike three call, got him. First strikeout. Lance Lux since coming into the game. Murphy. Staley will step in. Staley has struck out, reached on a fielder's choice, and drove in a run. 0 for 2 in this one. Side for ball one. One, three, and oh. For Sam, four, seven, and one for Texas. That one led to an unearned run in the first. Oh. 
Texas today has been pretty good with two outs, three for eight. Let's see if Staley can keep that going. Breaking ball catches the outside corner, and it's one and two. Exact location of the fastball, the previous pitch, floated a breaker in there. Breaking ball downstairs. Sam Houston. Garrett Egley. Egley up and throwing. Two and two to Staley. Almost hitting. Count goes full. Sometimes you can wait too long. You need to step off. I think he held that too long in that hole position. Yeah, I'm waiting for Staley. He may be called timeout. Well, just wait or step off. Silas will be off with this pitch. Now they call it time. Yeah. Austin Todd awaits on deck. Chop foul. We'll do it again. A week from the day. We'll be right back here at the dish. Really good midweek game with Arizona Wildcats. They are on their way to play U of H or just coming from play U of H? Coming from play U of H. Foul back out of play. Good at bad here for Staley. From Friday, Cal State Fullerton comes to town. Weekend series. Foul back, and we'll do it again. Not a fast worker is Lux. Comes set, works on his pace. Daly with a good at bat right here. So he can make it pay off. Fouled off another one. Tenth pitch of the at bat coming. Be a great night if the wind wasn't blowing, but it's only blowing 80 now. <laughs> it is whipping in here. On the ground to third, Vines in time, and that ends the inning. Two thirds of the game in the books. Texas in control, 4-1. In 19 Sunday afternoon, Austin Todd at the plate, back through the box. Game winner, walk-off style. Leads to a sweep for the Texas Longhorns. Friday night's opponent in Houston at Minute Maid in the SEC Big 12 Challenge, so to speak. 
See the three teams Texas will have in front of them. Arkansas still on the field. LSU started 500, three and three, and now won two in a row. Need to check out for his second inning of work here in the seventh. Texas with a four to one lead. It's got a good changeup. Holmes over the top of it for strike one. Six, seven, and eight do for the Bearcats here. Got off to a good start. Four of their first six batters reached base. They only came up with one. Since then, only one base hit since that first inning. Could go back to that first inning, biggest play of the game, was throwing the runner out at home and keeping it at one. Texas able to put four in the fifth, you know. We're into the seventh. You never know what could happen in that first inning. Downstairs to Holmes. Perfect throw by Kennedy. Yeah, and it's a night where outfielders are shallower, too, so I really was pretty surprised they were sending him. Right. To center, in for a base hit. Lead off base runner for the Bearcats here in the seventh. Good pitch selection, just left that one up again. Like we say, it's a lot easier to handle the ball up off the end of the bat and floats it out into right center. Ponert will step in. He is lined to center, grounded to third, 0 for 2. Bottom third of the order has struggled in this ball game for the Bearcats. 0 for 6 with three strikeouts. Longhorns a double play depth in the infield. Throw over. Starting to get some activity in both bullpens right now. Take a little longer to get loose tonight. Breaking ball. Not in a good location, but a strike. Yeah, kind of backed up on it. Stayed inside. Both bullpens are surrounded mostly by the wall, but they're still with the breeze that just kind of swirls in and out of them. Throw over. Back easily. Tristan Stevens, the right-hander up throwing for Texas. He's been that guy to get out of the inning all season long for the Longhorns. On the ground. The second for one, the relay to first. How about a 6-4-3 double play? That's what you're looking for. For Colby Kubacek, not hit real firm. Trey Faltini will come up, get it in a quick pitch and a strong throw right there from Staley right on line to Zach. Really like the way Staley backed away from the slide to allow the opportunity on the turn. Gavin Johnson steps in. 0 for 2 in this one as he steps in. First pitch in there for a strike. Veteran guy, excellent behind the plate. Off to a slow start, as we were mentioned, as Greg said, 290 hitter in 2019. What is that old line? Back of a baseball card doesn't lie. <laughs> At the end of the year, he may be close to that. On the ground, Staley. We go to seventh inning stretch. Texas leading 4-1.
Go to the bottom of the seventh, sort of summarize this one. 4-1 Texas lead, you can see the hit totals. Most of those, five of those hits came in that four-run fifth inning. Bearcats had a runner thrown out at the plate in the first after getting the four of the first six batters to reach base. Since then, Longhorn pitching has dominated. It's a 4-1 Texas lead as we go to the home half of the seventh. It'll be the top of the order, Zeke. And Austin Todd, who's been really good in this ballgame. Had another good game so far tonight. A couple of hits. Scored a run, an RBI. Yeah, going with that pitch, driving that run. His last time up. That, that was a really nice piece of hitting. For a guy that can hit the ball out of the ballpark, that hitting. Lead off base runner. Todd reaches first as Ellis comes to the plate. Right in the thigh. So chasing him. We can't get out of the way of that one. We're at the top of the thigh. That brings Duke Ellis to the plate. 0 for 3 in this one. To a fantastic start. Looking for his first knock of the night. Seven total for Texas. Bunts through it for strike one. Zubia waits on deck. David wondering if he called it on the pitch. He said he also went out but here. He went after it anyway. It looked like he did. Yeah. So 0 and 1. Ellis looks down. See what the sign is. Lusk has come set. 0 1 delivery inside. Count evens at 1 and 1. Good hit and run count here. See, Coach Pierce wants to go to that. To bunt attempts. Pulled back on that one. Switch it up right here. Put the defense in motion. Texas 5 for 13 with runners on tonight. And all five of those after the fifth inning from the fifth inning on there goes the runner throw to second base is in time as Todd is thrown out trying to steal second nice throw by Gavin Johnson 2-6 if you're scoring Duke was squaring around but then he pulled back as if to swing but the ball was up and the tag right on the foot. So one gone now. Two and one to Ellis. A good hack at that. Fouls it straight back. Count evens. Looking in for a sign, now set. Change up, maybe a breaking ball. A little slider. Count goes full. The payoff. Downstairs, ball four. So back-to-back -back hitters reach base, but the caught stealing. And on first, one out. We're going to have a pitching change. Zubia was coming to the plate. Zubia, one for three in this one. Is that one a big one? His 12th and 13th RBI on a single to right. We'll give you the information on the new pitcher when we come back. Texas leads 4-1. The third-ranked Texas softball team is back in action later tonight for the second game of their doubleheader versus the ninth-ranked Louisiana Ragin Cajuns. They won the first game 3-2. The Ragin Cajuns did. So you got to tune in later. 
to find out what happened in game two of that doubleheader. You can stream it all live on the ESPN app. New pitcher is Garrett Egley. He is a 6'4", 200-pound junior transfer from Smithson Valley High School at Midland College. So two innings of work on the season as he comes into the game. Here, Texas with a 4-1 lead. One run, four hits, no miscues for Sam. 4-7-1 for Texas. That one led to an unearned run in the first. And Texas pitching since the first been really good. Yeah, it has. Come out of the bullpen throwing strikes for Kubitschek, but after the first, Pete Hansen, well, he was unhittable. He went four per perfect innings, retiring 12 in a row. Egley finishes his warm-up pitches. Zach Subi will be coming to the plate. Third pitcher. Actually, fourth pitcher of the game for Sam Houston State. 6'4", 200-pounder from San Antonio. Again, the upcoming schedule. Big 12 SEC meet in Houston. Texas is part of that at 7 o'clock on Friday night, LSU. 7 o'clock for the third game of the day. A lot of times those tournament games don't start on Scheduled time. Scheduled at 7. Scheduled at 7. And then Sunday afternoon, the middle game at 3 o'clock. And then Arizona and Cal State Fullerton right here on LHN next Tuesday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. first pitch downstairs ball one to Zubia one for three in this one eight hits on the season for Zubia but he's driven in 13 runs that's really good run production it's not it was sacrifice flies his fielder's choice a couple last at bat with a single to right throw over Ellis, who is always a threat to run, back in easily. Back. Throw over again. Ellis back. It's not hard to read scouting reports when you're coming in your opponent and you look down and see a guy that hasn't been thrown out in two years. You know, if he's on first when I'm pitching, he's going to go. <laughs> Eventually. Not running. Breaking ball. Misses. And it's 2-0 to Zach. Breaking ball. Catches the corner. It's much like when you were pitching... And you were playing Ricky Henderson. He got on first. Pretty sure he was going. Yeah. At some point. Fast, fast runners, you want to make them come to a stop. They like to get that walking lead. So at least if you made him stop, you gained a little bit of advantage. There goes the runner. Pitches inside. Throw to second. Not in time. <laughs> Ellis with the stolen base. Still perfect. Not a great jump. Picked up some speed on the way down there. And the one hop down there to Shelton. Duke gets in. Three and one to Zubia now. Cam Williams awaits on deck. The big right hander set. Tip at the plate. We'll do it again. 3 2. Higley comes set. Ball downstairs, ball four. 
Three batters have come to the plate for the Longhorns this inning. They've all reached on three passes. There is one out in the inning after this caught stealing. But hit batter and two walks. And that brings Cam Williams to the plate. Williams singled his last time up. He's one for three. Speed misses outside for ball one. Just no defense against the walk. And you pitch behind, the hitter becomes very selective because they can afford to. See the wind whipping Eggley's jersey right there. The 1-0 to Williams. Backdoor breaking ball in there for a strike. Tried it with the first pitch, just missed, came right back to it. That one caught the corner. Looking down, trying to get the right number. See what happens and stepping back in. Stairs and it's two and one. Altini waits on deck. Turn around, timing play. Go through this, Greg, how does it work? Well, as the pitcher, you're looking, well, it, I think it was more of a flash play by the shortstop. You're looking at the shortstop and you see the glove there by McKenzie. When he flashes that glove, that's when you turn and throw. And it was, it's a timing play because it takes perfect timing on the throw and the shortstop. And you see just ahead of Duke getting back to the bag. So two runners retired at second base in the inning and now it's Two and two to Williams. Well, there are plays where you, the timing is where you just look at home and you're not even looking towards second, right. but that was more of the flash glove. Two, two. Fouled off, keeps hit bat alive. Two six put out and one six put out. Yep. Activity again. It's Bacchus, a lefty, up and throwing. The Bearcat bullpen. Seventh pitch of the at bat coming. Runner goes, got him. Over the top, ends the inning. Two guys retired at second base. We're through seven, 4-1 Texas. You look around the NCAA, some interesting stories. Greg, I know you know this young man at Duke. He threw a perfect game. Bryce Jarvis, a really good arm, a 15 strikeout perfect game. First in Duke's history, son of ex-big leaguer Kevin Jarvis right there. And then, of course, uh, the big series last weekend, Florida went down to Miami and swept that series. And then how about Central Florida? You don't beat Auburn very often. No. One of the better teams in the SEC. Yeah, number nine team in the nation. War Eagle. As it is 9-1-2, Duke. 
for the Bearcats here in the eighth. Had the lead in the first inning. The only loss of the year, they were behind St. Mary's early in the year. Never took the lead, lost that ballgame. So they had no comfort behind wins to this point of the season. Down three here with six outs to go. And then you know, the other part about that is 3 and 0 is not the way to get it started. But they're traveling this weekend, to play the Raging Cajuns. Matt Digg. Who was their head coach? David Pierce. David Pierce. <laughs> it's all. It's all home week. It's all home week all week. 3 0 downstairs, ball four. Don't want to set the table at the bottom and come back to the top of this order. You look at the Bearcats coaching staff, started with Hall of Famer Mark Johnson, who went from Texas A&M over, did a great job getting Sam Houston State into regional appearances. And then, of course, David Pierce in his three season, all he did was get in the tournament every year. Look at Matt Dix. He did a great job in his two years. Now the head coach at University of Louisiana. Raging Cajuns. Activity. Five in a row out of the zone. Silas Ardwan back out there to talk to his pitcher, Kubacek. Sean Allen on his way out as well. well. We've seen Stevens up, and he has been that guy, Greg, all season for Texas, where it's left or right coming to the plate, but he's been the guy to come in and get the outs and get the jam out of the jam. We've seen him up once. Clancy A is also up and throwing right now, too. There is Dre. Steven is not even throwing. He's getting a sweatshirt from Andre. So 1-0 to McKenzie as he steps back in here. Time run in the on deck circle now with nobody out. Good bender catches the outside corner. Throw over. Back easily. You said with Kubacek, it was about strikes. He came into the game. His stuff is really good. You can look at five innings of work, four walks. He hasn't been able to get the fastball where he wants it tonight. The changeup has been really good. The slider's been really good, but just hasn't been able to find the fastball. Big pitch right here. You don't want to go 3 1 to the leadoff hitter. Kinsey steps back in. Downstairs, and it is 3 and 1. Plantier throwing with a purpose now with his jacket off in the bullpen. Altini, I believe, had his shoe untied, and that's what the time was. Williams was trying to get everybody's attention, and Trey was trying to tie his shoe. 3 1 to McKenzie. On the ground, this could be two. Second for one, the relay to first, not in time. Fielder's choice. Four six on the put out. This is that big part of the order. And here comes David Pierce. I think he's going to make a move right now.
Duplantier will, will be coming into the ball game. It's never easy, it seems like, to get those last few outs in a game. It, it, it's a cold night. You know, you're, you're looking forward to You've sort of been in control of the game since the fifth inning. But still, the way the team gets back in the game is when you help them. Yeah, you come out and you, you throw strikes. Colby Kubitschek threw the ball well. He hadn't given up a run, but it just seemed c command of the fastball yeah. was a little off. You saw him right there talking to Coach Pierce. Maybe he couldn't get a good grip or maybe I mean, could have a blister. I don't know, but it just looked like he was doing something with his hand, causing him to not be effective. But you haven't given up a run, but late in the game right now, you get to the top of the order. That's where you don't want to give free passes. Yeah, because well, you've got the meat of this order, and this Bearcat team is a really good offensive team, and you can see that Kobe not very happy with himself, and Dre comes into the game, and boy, he's been good in every time we've seen him come out. He has. He comes out of the bullpen throwing strikes, got a really good breaking ball, and he hasn't shown any nerves when he's been in ball games. It seemed like he's liking what he's doing out there, and the I results the, have been good. I like the term you use when you described him, quick arm. Explain to the folks exactly what you mean by quick arm. Well, I mean, you don't extend too far back, but that's that's how when guys are deceptive is when they, they take their arm back and then all of a sudden it comes through the yeah. zone. I mean, it's on you in a hurry. And he really has good whip in, in the game. We call that a quick arm. He's got a good breaking ball to go with it. Don't forget, Texas baseball returns to LHN next Tuesday at 6.30 when the Longhorns take on Arizona right here at the dish. You can watch all Longhorn baseball games all season long right here on LHN or live on the ESPN app. As Plantier comes into the game, you've got a really good hitter coming to the plate. Bowser. Has reached and scored the only run when he flied to center. Duke Ellis misjudged it. And he is on the Golden Spikes watch list. An outstanding player. Five tool guys. Got power. First ever Bearcat on that Golden Spikes watch list. <laughs> 2019 Southland hitter of the year as a freshman. On the ground, Faltini, no chance, I don't think, to get the speed. Kowser can't hit a ball any harder than that, but couldn't turn the double play because of his speed. That yeah, was hit pretty firm right there at Trey. Perfect feed, but speed gets down the line. That brings Vines to the plate. He is single, grounded to short and walked, so he's one for two. First pitch fastball catches the outside corner. Well, this is a guy you want. You do not want Jack Rogers, who has big power, come to the plate as the tying run here. I'd rather face him in the ninth. He was up in the sixth in the same situation. So yeah, make him lead off the ninth. Big swing and a miss and quickly it's 0-2. Throw back up the middle, gets away. Backed up by Staley. Filthy cutter right there. Sam one for seven with two outs tonight. Yeah, haven't been able to come up with that knock that they've needed other than the one they got from Holmes in the first inning. That's the one. Throw over, gets away, but it hits Kowser. I mean, you can tell he got hit right away with that. He did not try to get up quickly in no, he, advance. He didn't care where the ball went out. It hurt. Caught him on the left form. Oh, 
the 0 2. There he goes. Pitch out. Throw to pitch out. Strike out. Now strike out. <laughs> That's the first. Wow. <laughs> Ends the inning with the strikeout. 4 1 Texas. 4 1 game. When the catcher stands up and walks outside, you're thinking pitch out. Well, there you, you go. see Silas step up. But Vines decided to have it would have fooled me. I would have thrown the ball to second as a catcher. So, I've not even thought about the guy swinging. So we got a hundred years up here watching I have, baseball. I have not seen that. Never, never seen a strike, strike out. three swinging on a pitch out. I guess, I guess it was close enough for him to think he could hit it. But, but there's Bo, a, Bo Jackson swung a pitch outs and hit opposite field homers, but yeah, but never they, a swing and a miss. Where Silas was, it, it, it's amazing there wasn't contact there. Right. See from the side, he steps up for the pitch out, and Vines right here reaches out, and then right there, oh, I don't have to throw it. Well, he stepped out for the pitch out, but yeah. fortunately he didn't go forward. Yeah. Ball came down and got the swing and miss. Landon Osley, local product right now in the ball game. From Lake Travis, into the game, facing five, six, and seven. He's got a really nice arm, this young man. Like Travis Cavalier, big one, back in his hometown. Big old kid. But 91 on that fastball right there is deceiving because of the weather and early in the season. He's going to top out in the mid 90s. Big time arm. Breaking ball. And I, Johnson did not see that. He went to catch that like a fastball, and it broke on him. He was looking for the express and got the local. Well, he's lucky then. Yeah. <laughs> Look, it went the other way around. There's nobody on. Looking for. <laughs> That's a difficult set of signs. I didn't hear any trash cans banging either. <laughs> The 1-1. One, one. Comes up empty. 0-1 on the season. Is this big right-hander? Leslie. Three innings of work. Breaking ball, wide foul. He's recorded nine outs. This season, six of them via the strikeout. Well, you can see with that curveball that he can control it. Both have been around the plate, but that fastball's the eliminator. Yeah, that's less late. Tough to pick up when you're looking for the fastball, and now all of a sudden I'm dropping Uncle Charlie in there. Right on the outer half. That's a, that's a buckler. Yep. Eric Kennedy steps in. He's had a big night. He's two for three. He scored a run. And again, in conditions like tonight, 90 is getting it up there. Mm -hmm. Yep. The one one to Kennedy. This is outside. The two one. Upstairs and it's three and one. Well, this is when as a hitter, I'm sitting on dead red. Got to. That's 99.9 .9 what you're going to see. That's paint, though. It's 
Osley lost his hat. Gus to 25, easy? Easily. <laughs> I think it's harder than that. Payoff. Downstairs, ball four. So Kennedy with a good night. He reaches three out of four times. And Juan will step in. Line to right, single to center to score, and reached on a fielder's choice. So one for three on the night. Fourth free pass for Texas in the last inning and a third. Pitch great tilt to that too with his size. Not only velocity, but hard to get on top of as a hitter. Down. Count evens. Peeking ahead to the night for Sam Houston State. They were at four, five, and six due in the ninth. That's a good location. Yeah, that one seemed to have a little cut to it. Charlie. Second strikeout of the inning. Yeah, that's, that's a big old curveball right there. Like I said, it, it can be filthy, but when, when you're looking at 93, 94, and then you try to adjust to that, not easy. Hodo will step in. He has walked twice and struck out. 0 for 1 officially. As he steps in here. Gets away. Kennedy easily advances to second on the wild pitch. Well, he recorded 11 outs, eight of them via the strikeout. Not a lot of people putting it in play. Texas two for six tonight with runners in scoring position downstairs. Opportunity here. Odo. He will step in. Two and oh now. It's another one when you're looking for dead red right now. Good location, tough to get to that one. And it's two and one. There's times when being effectively wild can come into play. And right now with this fastball, that's exactly how it is. You don't, you really don't know you gear where up, it's going to be. Yeah, gear up for it, but is it going to be up, down, in, or out? That one's down. That's three and one. delivery nothing you can do about that he just threw it by you here it is hit it we used to say turn up the volume to catch up <whistles> payoff downstairs ball four Strikeout, walk, strikeout. Or strikeout, walk, strikeout, walk now. Third walk of the night for Doug Hoda. We're going to have a pinch hitter here. As 
DJ Kretinsky comes out to pinch hit. Senior from Magnolia. Not an easy. I've got to tell you, this is not an easy job to do when you've been sitting over there for when they took BP. Five o'clock, five thirty this afternoon. Close to four hours ago. Yeah, and you're going to see something that's going to be rushing at you. Done the job. Got to be quick Look for something you can drive early. Senior from Magnolia. You'll step in here. Stairs for ball one. To me, this is a, maybe the best pitch of the at bat. Osley does not want to fall 2 0. He may not have quite enough on this, and he's going to try to deliver this in the middle of the dish. Try to put a good swing on it. Went to the break ball. That was a good call because your, your fastball really has no feel. When it's when it's swung and missed or it's around the plate, it is really by accident right now because he doesn't know where it's going. So try the breaking ball, which has been your best pitch or the one that you've got the outs with in the inning. Fastball misses outside, and it's three and zero. Oh. Top of the order, and Austin Todd awaits on deck. 24 pitches in the inning, 11 in the zone, 13 outside the zone. Ball four. Bases walked loaded for Texas as Todd comes to the plate. And it makes it extremely difficult for a, the umpire to even to try to call the strikes because he hasn't been around the zone. That one was close, could have been called, but you don't know where it's going. Interesting to see, we're going to have a pinch runner as Dixon will come in to pinch run. <laughs> Dixon will run for DJ. I believe he's going to stay in the game here. Probably go to second when he, yeah. after the inning. Todd has been outstanding this season with runners in scoring position. He's two for two with the bases loaded this season. Two for three tonight. He's reached four three times out of four. Scored. He's driven in a run. Just reach back and let that one go. The 0 1. Breaking ball stays upstairs, and it's 1 and 1. I come back to the breaking ball here. Now you know, Austin's geared up for, for the heater. Side and tried to guide it. Yep. Didn't throw that one. Came around it and slowed his wind up. Missing with two now. Gonna get the fastball. Downstairs, and it's three and one. Had a good hack. Fouled it back. Runners will be off now. 3 2.
Payoff. Got him. Oh, boy. Walked three. Walked the bases loaded. And struck out three in the inning. Four to one horns. We go to the ninth. Texas hitters did really well tonight. Set the table. Todd two for four with an RBI and a run. Eric Kennedy did an outstanding job tonight. Two for three tonight. Pete Hansen was perfect after that first inning. Yeah, first inning. You got the bases loaded. You give up a hit. A run is in. You get the runner thrown out at home. One run in the first for the Bearcats. All they have so far. And after that first inning, perfect. Four innings for Pete Hansen. Texas able to push four across in the fifth. Four, five, and six do for the Bearcats. They've got two hits. They have a ribby, the only ribby of the ball game. So they've done a little damage right here. Chasing three to get back in it. Plantier out for his first full inning of work. This is down the line. Opposite way. This is going to be extra bases for Rogers. Lead off double. First extra base hit of the night by either club. Kept his hands in. Shoots it right past the bag at third. Lead off double for Jack Rogers. Mr. Smith will step in. Leading hitter coming in 0 for 3 tonight. He's flied to center, grounded to third, and reached on a fielder's choice. Taking a strike. Bryce Holmes, left handed hitter in the on deck circle, is the tying run here. This is outside with a breaking ball. Ray comes set. Good hack, fouled it straight back. One and two. Got him with a good bender right there. Second strikeout, Duplantier. It's coming full force at you right here. Late break. Perfect location. Bryce Holmes steps in. RBI single his first time up. Vines was thrown out at the plate. Singled in the seventh. So he's two for three as he steps in. Six RBIs on the season so far for Holmes. Misses outside. And it's two and zero. Oh. Good heater right there. It's got some. Some tail to it, runs away from the lefty. Plantier looking for his first save opportunity. First opportunity to earn it right here. To right. In front of Hodo, they're going to hold the runners at first and third. Third hit of the night for Holmes. 
tying run will come to the plate for the Bearcats. No sense in maybe getting another runner thrown out at home. Hold him up. Pinch hitter. Facher. Blake Facher will be the pinch hitter. He is a six foot, 195 pound junior transfer. Lynn College. Sean Allen out to talk to his right hander. Facher will be the pinch hitter. So tying run at the plate here, top of the ninth. Facher another one out of the Cypress area. Hotbed down there. Cy Fair High School. Comes on as the pinch hitter. Roddy Roddy matchup here. Texas a double play depth in the infield. Breaking ball there for a strike. You wait all night to pinch it, you go up and you get a, <laughs> a knee buckling <laughs> breaking ball. Richard digs back in. Back to back. Quickly, an 0 2 count. Plantier comes set. Got him. Three breaking balls for the strikeout. Third of the night for the Longhorn right-hander. Three good breaking balls right there by Duplantier. Stayed out of the middle of the plate, kept them away from Fetcher. That brings Gavin Johnson to the plate. Left-handed hitter. The Johnson on the night, struck out twice, and grounded to second. Outside for ball one. Not holding the runner at first are the Longhorns. Advancing to second, and it's 2-0. Oh. Indifference. I don't think he'll be awarded a stolen base there. Wouldn't think so. The 2-0, break the ball in there for a strike. 2-0 breaking. The 2-1. Tardy on the ball that might have been out of the zone. I had a good run to it. It was in the zone about Four fifths the way there. It was just tailed away. Longhorn fans come to their feet here. Trying to secure their ninth victory of the season. Plantier set. 2-2 Two -two outside, and the count goes full. D. Shelton, switch hitter in the on-deck circle for the Bearcats. The 3 2. A high chopper. Going to be a difficult play. Duplantier underhand. Suzuki and the Longhorns win it.
Really nice job of, of making a defensive play right here. He's an infielder as well. Yeah, but that, that's not an easy play for, for anyone. I mean, that ball bounces up in the air that high. That's one of the highest I've seen bounce here at the dish in a long time. And this just right off the plate, stayed with it like a pop fly and a quick toss to Zach. Horns hang on or the 4 1 victory, a save right there by Andre Duplante. He had five freshmen out there in the field in that ninth inning. Yeah, you look at that. I mean, first save of his career. Now, the other part, we can start looking forward to it. This homestand, a six game homestand, you go on the road, you play really good ball in Houston, you come away with a sweep of the three game series. Then you come home and you did exactly what you needed to do. You took care of business at home. Now you go to Houston 9 0. Yeah, you talked about it before the home, right when the home stand started, about possibly being at this point when they go down to play LSU, Arkansas, and Missouri. Well, they, they have taken care of business. They've done it with some really good pitching and some two out hitting tonight is what happened to where they got the four there in the fifth inning. So they've put themselves in a position by playing good baseball going into now the 12th ranked and 5th ranked teams in the nation. Yeah, and we start to see the identity. The identity of this team is good defense and pitching and scrappy offensively. Yeah, I mean, you're going you're going to have to to scrap the runs across. They haven't seen that much. I saw power at Rice, but when you get to the dish, it's really it's it, few and far between. It takes they, away the power. They did. They, they took advantage of walks, scored runs, and did what it took in some games here, but they're going to need the pitching to step up again. And you've our final score here is Texas 4, Sam Houston 1. Texas baseball returns to LHN on March 3rd as the Harns take on Arizona. For Greg Swindell and our entire crew, let's say so long from the dish as we go down to the eyes of Texas.